Well, good morning, party people. How's it hanging? I've never done a video like this before, but I wanted to sit down and do a get ready with me where I do my makeup and just kind of catch you guys up to date on some of the things happening in my life. I am definitely not a makeup guru, so don't come at me too hard for the way that I do my makeup. I know that there's a lot that I don't do that's conventional. Totally get it. It's totally fine. I also know that this is not a makeup channel. This is just something that I wanted to do for funsies, and I thought that it would be a good way to fill you guys in on everything happening. So sit back, get yourself a cup of coffee or tea or maybe a glass of water. Hydration is important after all. And just sit back and enjoy this video. <sighs> coffee is amazing. And what's crazy to me is that there was actually a time in my life where I didn't drink it and I thought that I didn't need it. But then one morning when I was still working super early mornings and had to wake up at 3.30 a.m., I drank some on my way to work and I didn't feel like death for the first half of the day. And I thought, wow, this is what people were talking about. It only took me like 22 years to figure that out, but now it is a staple and I never go without it. And I'm definitely like a creamer snob too. I like all the fancy creamers and all that kind of thing. Anyway, before we get into all of the good stuff with the makeup, let me go and get dressed real quick. All right, that's better. Now I feel a little bit more prepared to do this video. I also went ahead and took the space buns out of my hair. My hair on its own is pretty straight. It doesn't really have a whole lot of wave to it or anything, but I absolutely love big, beautiful, hair and this is kind of a way for me to do it that is very passive and doesn't require a bunch of time with my hands up with a curling iron or anything like that I just put it up in the space buns and go to sleep sometimes I'll put like a curling mousse in it or something like that and I get this crazy looking hair that probably isn't exactly what I'm going for but it works for me and I thought that I would show you guys that for this video too so all of the products that I'm going to be using will be listed down in the description below. If I have to interrupt my train of thought too much to describe what I'm doing while I'm also trying to give you life update stuff, uh, it's not going to go very well. I tried to do that twice before now. I've tried to film this video. It hasn't worked out the way that I wanted it to. So we're going to do that instead. And that way, if you guys are curious about what I'm using, you can go down in the description and check it out. The only exceptions to that are some products that I got in an influencer Vox box. I will be going over those with you guys and showing them to you and kind of talking about that a little bit. But yeah, let's just, let's get into the life update. I will tell you that for my scar, because it's a relevant topic on this channel, it's a pretty big deal, I have been using the Mederma Quick Drying Oil, and I like it quite a bit. I have had this for a long time, but I couldn't use it for quite a while because my face was still healing and really, really sensitive, and you have to massage it into your skin quite a bit. But now that I'm at a point in my healing journey where things are a little bit better, I can use it and I use it day and night. It dries really, really fast. You can put makeup on over top of it. So it's good for scars, stretch marks, uneven skin tone, and dry skin. So if you have any of those things going on, you might want to check out this Mederma Quick Drying Oil. A little bit goes a long way and it lasts forever. To start off, I guess we will talk about my face because I did mention it. Obviously, things are healing really, really well, and I'm really happy about that, but I knew from the beginning, and this is something that I've been saying all along, that at some point I wanted to look into some kind of plastic surgery, because there's only so much my body is gonna be able to heal on its own, and there are little things that I want to get fixed at some point. The good news is, because my injury is service connected, meaning that it happened while I was in the military, uh, the VA is going to pay for most, if not, I think all, of any procedure or cost that I will need. And I actually should be having an appointment sometime next month to go and talk to them and get a consult and to move forward with that process. So that's really, really exciting. And whenever that happens, I will probably be vlogging that just because I've been really open about sharing everything that happened since my attack on this channel. 
I want to continue to do that, especially for people who have had similar things happen. I just want to be able to show that no matter how terrible something is, no matter what happens to you, you can overcome it. There is a way through it and it can only go up after the bad thing happens. Um, and you really have to keep that in mind for yourself. So that's a really good positive thing. Something else that I wanted to talk about because it ties into my whole military thing. Actually, I should probably tie some of my hair back before I start putting on makeup. Otherwise, I'm gonna end up with a mess. I separated from active duty in July, which was the culmination of a whole lot of hard work. On my part, I got out and it was immediately like this sense of stress and anxiety that I had been carrying with me just fell off of my shoulders because all of this stuff that I was being forced to worry about because of the fact that I was in that environment no longer mattered. It just ceased to become relevant. I can't even begin to describe to you how incredible that was. There are still times now, several months down the road, where I just have to stop and appreciate the fact that I'm no longer in that environment because it just feels so good to be out. That is all very good and well, but it kind of leads me to where I am now. So I decided ahead of me separating that I was going to do about four years in the reserves. And it wasn't because I felt like I needed the security or anything like that. It was purely because while I was active duty, I applied for and got something called the Law Enforcement Officers Safety Act or LEOSA. And it's basically a concealed carry permit for military law enforcement. It started in the Air Force and then it transferred over to the Navy where like Navy personnel could get it. Not only does it authorize you to carry concealed off duty, but it's reciprocal for all 50 states. So meaning, even though you have to abide by the particular regulations of whatever state it is that you're in, in regards to their firearm laws, you don't have to go and apply for a different permit for every single state or for whatever states are covered under whatever permit. It covers you across the board. So it cuts out a whole lot of red tape for a pretty nominal fee. And I did a whole video about it back when I got mine and I basically went head to head with the state of Connecticut and them not wanting to honor it and let me have my firearm. So if you haven't seen that, you can go and check it out. But anyway, I went through all that trouble to get it and I was like, you know, if at all possible, I should keep this because I'm a big believer in having the right to defend yourself and I went to all that trouble to get it, I definitely want to keep it. By the way, I know I'm not using a beauty blender, I'm going in with my hands. Um, I am not a beauty guru, I shouldn't even have to say that, but I have a beauty blender, I just don't really use it too much. I use my hands like 85% of the time for most things and I know that that's not an approved method, so don't come for me in the comments. I'm just doing my thing, this is what works for me. Uh, <laughs> this is not a beauty guru recommended method, it's just... It's just what I do, man. One aspect of the Leosa is that if you do 10 years law enforcement, you get to keep it for life. And since I was already sitting at six years active duty, if I did four years in the reserves, that would put me at 10 years. I could keep my Leosa forever. So that was a huge incentive for me wanting to do the reserves. That was the only incentive I had for doing the reserves. And so I decided, you know what? It's only four years. I can put up with that. No big deal, whatever. So I got attached to a unit in Louisiana, and interesting thing about them, well, let me just say that things kind of started to degrade for me in regards to me wanting to do the reserves pretty quickly. One of the biggest things is that this unit, it does their two weeks training in Gaeta, Italy. So in the reserves, you go and drill somewhere once a month, and then two weeks out of the year, you go and do training somewhere, and it's different for every single unit. Well, this unit goes to Gaeta, Italy. And let me just say that if I was single and didn't have a family and didn't care about being home or anything like that, going off to Gaeta, Italy, that would be pretty awesome. I mean, I would love to go to Italy someday anyway. Um, just not maybe on the dime of the Navy. And a big reason for that is that I was talking to them, I was telling them that with my program at school, given that it's pretty demanding, during the summer, I need to be focusing on getting internships and volunteering and building up a resume so that when I graduate, I can try to find a job. And their response to that was, well, don't worry about it because we don't usually do our training over the summer. A lot of the time, we'll do it over Christmas. Now. Like I said, single, no family, whatever, it wouldn't matter. Going overseas somewhere over Christmas might not sound so bad, but I have already done all that being active duty and I haven't been home for a holiday, missed a whole lot of birthdays since I joined the Navy. So 
if they think that I would honestly be down to go traipsing over the Atlantic to a foreign country over Christmas when I could be home making memories with my family members, they're out of their mind. And so that was the first big thing. And then the second thing was that once we finally went to a physical drill, because they had everybody teleworking, which is weird, but they had everybody teleworking because of the whole COVID situation. When we finally went to a physical drill, for the weekend, I kind of just got to see what it was all about. And I was talking to this one guy who, it was his first drill in person as well, and he had been active duty in the past as well, and I was asking him why he decided to do the reserves, and his response was that he was bored. Now this guy is a cop out in town. He has plenty going on for him. I also think he's married and had a family, but he was bored, so his response to that boredom was to join the reserves. I mean, I'm not gonna knock it. Different strokes for different folks, whatever, it's fine. I just know for me, if I'm bored, the last thing that I'm gonna do, most likely, is join the military. I've already done that, and he had already done it too, and that's why it was so weird to me. And the whole time that I was sitting there, I was just thinking to myself, this is a waste of my time. I value my time and my energy, and there are other things that I could be doing, especially given everything going on with school, that would be a much better use of my time than what I'm doing here. Not only that, but my biggest incentive for doing the reserves was the Leosa. Well, I went ahead and got my Texas pistol permit, and, and Texas is reciprocal for all of, but like, California, Colorado, New York, New Jersey, and like a few other states. Frankly, if I'm being totally honest, states that I am most likely never going to visit. So my whole incentive for doing the reserves fell apart really quickly. In addition to all of that, like I had said in the beginning, one of the biggest things when I left active duty was the fact that all of this stress that I had been feeling fell away. Well, now in the reserves, Although it was in a diluted sense, I was starting to get tastes of that stuff again. All the stuff that I did not like about active duty. I was starting to get little bits and pieces of in the reserves. So all of this is to say that I had a really long think about it. Stuart and I had several long conversations about it and we basically came to the conclusion that it's just not worth it. Neither of us needs it, neither of us wants it. We have too much other stuff going on. We don't have an incentive to do it. And so I've started the paperwork process to transfer out of the reserves, which the reserves is different than active duty. That's something that you can do. You can put in paperwork and they'll transfer you to something called the IRR, which is something that if you don't do the reserves, everybody who leaves active duty goes into for a little bit of time. That is where things are sitting with that right now. My time and my energy and what I am willing to put myself through, I just, I value all of that too much to continue to put myself in that environment. I left active duty for a very very specific set of reasons, why would I want to expose myself to any of that again in any way, shape, or form? You know? It's just my reasons are not strong enough. And I understand some people's reasons are different, they have different motivations, I would never knock that. And I would never tell somebody not to join the military. It was has obviously been very, very beneficial for me, but I got what I needed out of it. And once I reached that point, I realized it was time to end that chapter and move on to a next. And I think it's really, really important to be able to acknowledge when you're at that point and when it's time to turn another page. And that is where I am at right now. And I feel really, really good about it. I'm very confident in my decision. I'm not the kind of person that likes to cling to things out of a sense of security or anything like that. I think that you should just kind of balls to the wall, face life, and just take it for what it is and not let fear of anything hold you back. I've always said that. I just wanna say real quick, for the longest time, I was afraid of doing my eyebrows. I was afraid of overlining them and having them look crazy, but I have been getting over my fear a little bit more lately and I really love doing my eyebrows now. That's totally unrelated to anything that I was just talking about, just kind of circling back to the get ready with me part of this video. Something else that I wanna talk about is school, because that's very, very relevant, obviously. This this has been my first semester going to a brick and mortar university campus since before I joined the Navy. And I always liked taking classes in person, I always liked the university environment, um, but I think just given the fact that I have a broader perspective of life in the world now than I did before when I was just going to the little local college in my hometown. I am noticing things about school that I would probably wouldn't have noticed before and it's been it's been really interesting. I love to learn and in case you didn't know, I am majoring in forestry with a concentration in wildlife management. So what that means is that after I get my degree, I can go on and do conservation, I can become a park ranger, I could become a forester. There are just 
ton of applications for it and the environmental sector is really huge right now so the job market is looking good. Environmental conservation is something that I'm really really passionate about. I want to do my part to protect the natural environment. I really love the stuff that I've been learning in school when I have been learning it. It's really interesting and I'm the kind of person who likes learning anyway so that's kind of a positive for me but the thing is I think that I have come to the realization and Stuart and I have had a lot of conversations about this. School, as wonderful as it is, you get put in this university environment and universities are basically just giant systems to make money and the students are kind of the oil that greases the gears that keeps this giant thing moving. They bring in the revenue and they keep everything going and so you end up being little better than a source of income for this giant system. And of course there are going to be professors who do care about you, care about your success, put in the time and the effort, but they are much fewer and further between than I had thought that they would be. And that has been a difficult thing for me to embrace or I guess understand and acknowledge because I want to believe that all of the people who are teaching me and supposed to be helping me through this journey of education are as invested in my success as I am and the fact is that that is just not the case. They are involved in their own stuff, they have their own thing going on, this is not their main focus. It's not even a primary focus for a lot of them. One of my professors is working on his PhD right now and so his attention is tremendously split and you can tell, you can tell that he just kind of doesn't really want to be there, kind of doesn't really want to be teaching us. We're more of an inconvenience than anything, the class as a whole, and that really really sucks. But at the end of the day it's all about playing a game and that is true for much in life. You have to play the game to win the prize of whatever it is that you want, and which in this case is a piece of paper saying that I received X number of years of education at Y institution, meaning that I'm qualified for Z job. And that is just the long and short of it. It's not good, bad, or indifferent. It's just the way that it is. And I think I had a much more romanticized view of what it would be like prior to coming into it that has been significantly stripped away since the semester began. So if you are younger and you're watching this video and you are going through something similar in college or you're about to be going into college and you're wondering what it's going to be like, just enjoy the experience for what it is, absorb what you can, but at the end of the day just recognize the fact that what you get is what you get. It's only for a limited amount of time and then you move on to something else. Don't let your become too heartbroken by everything if that makes sense alrighty so now we get to the part of the video where I have those products that I wanted to talk to you about so I got a Vox box from influencer which I've talked about a little bit in the past it's basically a company where you write reviews for any type of product makeup food cleaning household whatever and every once in a while they will send you a box of whatever product for you to test and review and it's a mutually beneficial relationship for all parties involved the companies get reviews on their products you get to try stuff for free it's pretty awesome and so I got a box a little while ago of L'Oreal Paris products and it's like basically a complete eye look so I definitely want to go over that and I'll be doing using the products for this video now I want to say that L'Oreal is a company that I used to buy from in the past but within the last few years I switched to being 100% cruelty free in my makeup products and that's just something that is important to me and something that I care about and L'Oreal for whatever reason is still testing on animals which is just unacceptable to me so I would never buy their products in a store I would never support them with my dollar however since I got these products for free I have no qualms about using them but I will be reflecting the fact that they are not cruelty free and that that is a huge reason why I would never buy from them in my reviews I think it's important to let companies know what you will and will not support and what you expect to see from them and this is a really really good way to do that through influencer and their products and writing reviews and all that so I do want to say that and get that out of the way first and foremost they sent me an eyeliner which I have not used at all yet a mascara a mascara primer and a liquid eyeshadow which is pretty exciting I've never used anything like this so we'll go ahead and get started with all this stuff so I have used this primer in the past and it actually works pretty well and it's a good thing that they sent it to me given the type of mascara that they sent me. This primer is meant to lengthen and volumize and it looks white when you put it on but once you put mascara on none of the white shows through whatsoever. 
so don't let that be a detractor. The mascara that they sent me is this telescopic lengthening mascara and normally when I buy mascaras I go for length and volume. My lashes are decently long on their own anyway so for me it's more about the volume than anything but I mean this applicator is teeny tiny so you can tell it's mainly for lengthening it's not for anything else and when I first put it on I wasn't sure if I liked it because like I said I go for the volume and the length and this is purely lengthening and it was just almost a little bit too much of a spidery look and I wasn't really sure how I felt about it but with the primer and everything else I will say that I don't hate it and once I get through this tube I may be very tempted to go and try to find a similar mascara from say CoverGirl or e.l.f. which are the two companies that I primarily buy from. I just realized I think I'm supposed to put my eyeshadow on first before I put my mascara on It'll be fine. I'm not gonna do a lot. Tell I'm not a makeup guru. I really only feel like I've started to get better about makeup within the last few months or so. Obviously having a giant scar on my face has made me want to wear more just to try to tone down the appearance of that scar. So I have been wearing it more often and so I guess practice does make perfect in that regard. But I am not a pro. Oop, got some on my cheek. So another thing that I want to touch on in this video is my Opus Day deep dive series, which I've stepped back from in a massive way just since school started. I did that kind of like wrap up video back a little while ago. And in that video I said like, hey, you know, this isn't the end. I do want to return to this. I have a feeling that I'm gonna be returning to this at some point in the not too distant future, but because of XYZ reasons, I need to take a step back for a little while. And it's been a good thing that I have. I think it's allowed me to kind of return to making more traditional content on this channel, which is important to me. With school and everything, there's just absolutely no way that I could have continued at the tilt that I was with the just super heavy researched videos that I was doing for that series. I mean, it's just the way it is. You have to do quite a bit of research for those videos if you want them to be good. There's just a lot of information to be covered. I knew that I would need to take a step back and I'm really, really happy that I did, but I still get emails from people pretty frequently with their experiences and everything and a few of them have said, oh man, I wish I would have gotten to you before you wrapped up your series. And I just wanna say, my series isn't done. I have a really good feeling that I'll be making another video in the not too distant future. And I know that as time passes, I'll have more reasons to make more videos. I just needed to take a step back from what I was doing for all those reasons that I said in that video so that I could focus on other things. But I'm definitely not done. So if you are wondering what happened to the Opus Day videos or why I stopped making them, Go and watch that wrap up video and just know that there are more coming. It's just gonna take a while. I have other things in my life that are taking my attention and the videos are not easy to make. They require a lot of energy on my part and a lot of time and research. So just hang in there, more are coming. I definitely meant to use this eyeliner. I don't know why, it's because I don't normally wear eyeliner in my day to day. I normally just go foundation, some contour, some highlighter, maybe a little eyeshadow if I'm feeling frisky, my brows, mascara, and then I call it a day. I don't normally wear eyeliner and that's why I forgot to put this on. But I wanted to put it on to review it, but now I don't know if I can just because I already have mascara on. I'll try to do a little, try to do a little bit. This is, uh, by the way, it's the Infallible Longwear Eye Pencil. It's just a crayon. Whew, that is super dark. That goes on real easy. Oh man. All right. I'm gonna go do this in a mirror that I can stand closer to. I'll be back in a second. All right, so I went and put it on in a mirror that I could stand a little bit closer to. I also, after I put it on, I smudged it with a brush. It's a super intense eyeliner. It's really, really soft. It's jet black, which is not a color that I normally use, and it goes on really easy. So if super intense, dark eye looks are something that you like or you really like the black eyeliner, this would probably be a good product for you. Probably not gonna be a good review for me though, just because it felt messy and it felt like I was really having to fight it to keep it from just going everywhere. So something to keep in mind if you like L'Oreal products and you're thinking about trying this one. I think that's a pretty good update on everything going on. Um, RV life is really, really good. I have absolutely no complaints. I love our life that we've made for ourselves. You know that because I say that in practically every single trailer chapter vlog. I do have more content coming up. I know I've been 
teasing a DIY video for quite some time and that is still in the works it is still coming please be patient it just takes a while because all of these different little things that we're doing they take time and since we're in school and we have work and everything else we can't knock everything out in an afternoon like we might like to so it's taking a while to compile all of the footage but once we have all that and everything is done I will definitely be getting that video out for you guys because I know that's something that everybody really wanted to see things are changing and shifting we're adding and taking away and modifying things I have an oven over here now which is new but if you saw my cooking video you know that I mentioned that I was trying to figure out a different place to keep it and we decided to put it back here and it just looks better out there and whatever it's it's RV life you know it's not conventional it's not normal it's just a little bit different you roll with the punches and you make it your own and that's all there is to it as much fun as this video has been I do probably need to wrap it up because I don't know if you can see or if you've been able to see the dogs but they have just kind of been circling me the whole time that I've been filming River has her head on my knee right now they probably need to go outside and they probably want to go for a walk and I have a giant pile of laundry to fold and other things that I need to get to that this video has been distracting me from so gotta go get on with the rest of my day. I hope you have a great rest of your day and that you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun for me. I've never done something like this before. Give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I do hope that I will see you for the next video whenever and wherever that may be. Bye guys.